check the website, is that correct? Yeah, it'll be on the website and probably, and also I'll email it out, yeah. Okay, so, so website, okay. email, you can't go wrong. Just, uh, it should be in two weeks, but we have to check to make sure that the whole building can accommodate it. Um, so, uh, two people. So, my auntie Lou passed away. Yes. And that's a very uh, great, great person, as we all know. And another person, some of you might not know, is Gail Great, who also passed away today. And Gail Great is an actor, an actress, who um, I was lucky enough to have act in several of my plays that happened right here. So she was Lucy in the America play up in Martinson. And she was also Bully in In the Blood down in Sheba. And she was one of the actresses who joined us when we started doing the 365 Days, 365 Plays. We had a table full of fabulous, fabulous actors um, who read through it with us uh, before we put it into publication and started the whole year long festival. She was one of them. And uh, she was sick for a long time, and she passed away today. So she's hanging out with Maya, Angela. She's an amazing actor and really nice. So today we, um, we can think about them, or, uh, or we can think about um, ourselves and our own work, which is probably going to do this better at this point. So we're going to work for 45 minutes. Oh, so those of you who don't know what we're doing, does anybody know, wonder why they're here or what we're doing? <laughs> You are here for your first time. Is anybody else going to start their first time? Oh, what? Yay! This is amazing. This is amazing. Look at you guys. First time here. Okay. Well, I have to explain like what we're doing. So this is Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Ray Parks. This is the lobby of the public theater. <laughs> um, and uh, so what we're going to do is we are, this is a, this is two things at once. It's a two group. Um, it's a meta-theatrical free writing class. And those of you who have gone to grad school or been hanging out a while know what meta theatrical means. I'm not sure I do. It's a meta theatrical free writing class, and it's also a play. So, what we do is first we do the, and we have people online watching also, and maybe they'll tweet in their questions, and Patty and Elena is going to give us the address for that. But what we do first is we spend 45 minutes doing the action of the play, which is basically you all are doing your work. Whatever your work is, it can be writing, it can be whatever. You guys online also, okay? And then we do some time. We spend some time after the 45 minutes. We do the dialogue of the play, which consists of you all and also online asking me questions about your work. I'll say it again. You ask me questions about your work. Not you asking me questions about my work. It's you asking me questions about your work. Okay? So it's about you, actually. So watch the word, the me is you. Alright? If that's not complicated enough, all you gotta do is like be quiet before you talk to us and pretend to work. And then it's time to talk. Okay, so Patty's gonna give us the address for folks online who want to tweet in their questions, please. At Watch Me Work S L P with the hashtag new play. At Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag new play. No, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just repeated right after you. I was going to turn my brain off and just open my mouth. Um, great. So we're going to work for 45 minutes and we're going to time it. And uh, then we'll have the, the dialogue part. Okay? And I. Oh, you're just waving yeah, something. Yeah, say it. Come on. You can get up and move around. It's not we don't strap in your chairs. This isn't that program where you can't pee or whatever. Just call
the action part. And now we'll do the dialogue part. I know there's a joke in there. <laughs> Tracy, 
can I help you become a better visual artist? I don't know, maybe. But um, maybe uh, a combination. Maybe um, eventually doing some workshop with actors, sure, but not to count on them for dialogue necessarily. Okay, so maybe reading some really great scripts, thinking of some writers that you really like, or some movies that you really like, and finding their scripts that are easy to find and sell on the street, right? So easy to find. Um, maybe watching some movies, you don't even have to read them. Just turn on the Netflix or the Amazon Prime or whatever, you know, or Hulu or whatever you got, and watch them, or just listen. Um, maybe really focusing, focusing, focusing on what your characters want. So they're not doing the roundabout thing, you know, we, you know, they're not, yeah, yeah, you know, do this, you know, they're in the end, I'm going to punch you. You know, that's not, you know what I mean, they're, they're, they're that kind of thing. Yeah, even if it's a romantic comedy, they're still, especially if it's a romantic comedy. <laughs> you know, it's like rock and sock and robots, you know, but they should always be, you know, in the pocket in there. Even if they're the kind of character that has all the laundry and switches, all the world to save, blah, blah, blah. That's tight, right? <laughs> Even though James is like, blah, 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 blah. You know, so, that helps. So I would say, after you've done the watching and the reading and the focusing on your character's intent or desire, and eh, drop it you know, icing on, icing on the cake is the workshop, I think. I think, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Any questions okay. Yes, you've been here before, no? Nope. No, you look familiar. You have a skateboard now. You look familiar. I get told that a lot, so. Um, <laughs> um, I'm writing a play about uh, the Booth brothers and yeah. specifically the rivalry between Edmund and John Wilkes and the role that had in Lincoln's assassination. Right. So being that it's just a really kind of large, sweeping story, yes. I'm trying to condense as much as I can of the action, and I find a lot that I'm getting forced to use, uh, like a letter metaphor, kind of letters back and forth of this, not a metaphor, sorry, a device uh, to tell the story, and it, it just seems like it's getting static because it's a lot of just monologues. Right. So I'm wondering if you have any advice on how to maybe find a cleaner path through that and to, to move the action forward without getting kind of caught up yeah. in those. Do they, did they write letters back and oh, forth yeah. and talk a lot? Yes, quite a bit. Oh, so that's so, right, so that, I mean, so that's a real thing you're using, which could be cool. Um, were they often in the same room? Uh, I mean, not all the time, but sometimes. Yeah, I, time. I tried to, I mean, any time that they were sort of in the same place, I'm trying to focus on that and really spend right. the scenes there. But there's so much information from, you know, one year when they're in the same room at one place and then one year later that I'm trying to cover right. that I just feel like to, to try and get it out in dialogue, then it just becomes an entire scene of just expository information. Right, and the information is necessary for driving the story forward. Yes. Okay. I mean, try. I mean, I don't know. I don't see why a letter would necessarily be boring if it's. If, is it? You just. You're not just taking it from the actual letter. You're. I'm. I mean, I'm trying to use that for inspiration, but I'm also not. Right. I mean, I. I'm not just a copy paster. So. Right. 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 I don't know. I, I think the letters sound kind of interesting. They're you know, taken from actual historical documents. Yeah. And what makes you think they're boring and just a bunch of money? Uh, I, I mean, I think part of it is just I'm still in first draft, and that's kind right. of, you know, a lot of it is just kind of, pardon my, uh, not French here, but it's like verbal diarrhea. Right, right. right. And it's just kind of all spilling out on the page, and it, it feels like they wander a lot rather than getting the information out and just getting Right, so you're going to think, how close are you to the end of the first draft? Uh, probably another week, two weeks worth of writing here. So finish it and then look at it. I mean, okay. yeah, you know, I mean, if you, you know, your birth person told you out, you know, like, oh, I don't know, but you still have a tail. <laughs> Throw it away. You know, and I was <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 we'll, we'll spin it, we'll bring it to term, and then we'll take a look at it and see. Or whatever, <laughs> one's allowed to live, and they let you live, whoever they were, and here you are today. So we can use the same idea for our play. You get to the end of it, we get to turn.
term before you're going to look at it and start paying it. Right? Give it a chance to become, you know, the first draft, which is the first day of everything. And then just try to see. And if they're boring, then you can fix them then. You can see where it goes. You know? You know, you give it a chance. You start to judge it. Because if we were to repair that problem, something else would jump up. You know, it's, it always, that, that's, or, or you, you'll start worrying about disappointing your dad. Can I, can I ask a two-part question then? <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, do you What's your name, though? Justin. Justin? Yes. Okay. Um, and sorry, this is about how you work, but... Oh, then, do you, what, what did I say? I, I apologize, but... Pause. Pause. <laughs> Does anybody else have a question about your work or your creative process? Then just pause. Thanks. It, it's not... It, that uh, lovely writer who was talking about dialogue, yeah. it's yeah. just something that I do. Yeah. I take the subway. I find that the subway is a great, if you listen on the subway, you will hear so many, how people really speak. And, and it's just a wonderful tool. It's, it's kind of a joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you know, it's the way people speak to each other. Yeah. Which tricky though, just to say, I mean, you do pick up, I mean, you're right, man, and it's, it's also a great rhythm you can get into the train, the way it moves. But what's, what's, what's tricky is the way people talk in real life isn't necessarily good dialogue for a movie. Not necessarily. No. I don't you know, or the way something that happens to you in real life isn't necessarily. If you just silly putty it down on the page, is it going to make a great play? Or is it going to make a great screenplay or a song or whatever? You have to use that right here behind it. So that's the, the, the thing that the way to But it's just a very brief thing. We'll get back here. But we're just taking people who have issues about their stuff. Anybody else? Yes. Hi. Um, Hi. Yes. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm back to the play we had struggles with from the very first time I came here. Okay. And I'm finding that, um, I'm wondering if my characters, one, seems to constantly be evolving with what's going on in my life. I right. find like there are more things to add on. And one of the, I guess they're both the protagonists, um, but um, one of them is still kind of his objective is still the same, I guess, in the whole art. And I don't know exactly where we're going again with this play as far as, even down to, I had four characters, then it went to three, and now it's the two of them. The, the one with the name? No. This no, this is something, okay. yeah, okay. something that, the okay. other one that I've been, lost the work, we, we went through. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 no, sabotage yourself, I remember, I remember. Um, but, uh, 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 so, <laughs> yes, I remember. Um, so now I just kind of am trying to figure out where, where to go, what to do with them, because, again, one seems like, I don't, I don't know if it's, just, it takes place in one place, in one setting, and so it's like, are they just going to sit and just talk <laughs> for 90 minutes or 87 minutes, or what are they going to talk about, what are they... You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's even a real question. Have I asked the question? It had, it had a little thing in the end. <laughs> that was the it question. Had thing. <laughs> that thing that they call the, the question the mark. mark. Yeah. I guess I didn't mark it. Did, you, did your voice kind of go up? <laughs> I guess, what do I What do I do with them now? It sounds like a question to me. Now? <laughs> yes, now. What do I do with them now? Um,
We have, to, we have a, a timer, a, um, you have a train, you can take a train, you can take a train, right? You can take a train? So you got two minutes, right? You got a notebook? Yes. Great. Okay, so what I want you to try, I want you to start doing is every day do a, a writing meditation. Okay? Writing meditation. This is easy and it's not my idea. This is a, you can do sitting meditation or you can do, um, you know, those, those, those famous Julia Cameron, she has those morning pages, really can we have the writers, the artist yeah. way. Um, Natalie Goldberg, that's a wonderful thing to write. I, I don't know what she calls it, but I call it writing meditation. She might call it singing. And what's great is that it's kind of, I think, better than morning pages because you don't have to do it in the morning. And, and it doesn't have to be three pages, but she says do it for 20 minutes, which magically comes out to be three pages. But it's better because she says keep the pen moving on the page. The morning pages you get lost in your mind, like oh da 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 da, and then an hour goes by and you've got two pages done. This is better. Twenty minutes, so you set the timer twenty minutes and you do it. So every day, twenty minutes, writing meditation. Keep the pen moving. Write with your you know long hand, don't have to write it. Right? Blah 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 blah. Whatever, and then you can start thinking about your plan of the page. Just do that. About your dialogue scene, you're gonna stay in the room. Just write, just do that. Just, but write about the play or just. You can write about the play, sure. Or anything. Or anything. Yeah. Like a journal. Yeah, like that. Okay, don't worry about the play for a little bit. Don't worry. It's driving me crazy. It's like someone driving me crazy. I'm yeah. on the street. Just walk, walk, walk. Just get your head. You got a lot going on. Is really tall. 
but your husband isn't, right? You know, I mean, I don't know, maybe she's a nosy person. You know, you should, you gotta, you gotta get to know the chicken. Yeah. You gotta get to know the characters, okay? Um, connected to the urgent needs of the characters, and not the urgent need of the playwright to get the information out to the audience. Right? That's the difference, I think. We sit there and go, oh, they gotta know this, they gotta know this, they gotta know this, and we forget that the characters, it has to be connected to the characters' need, and not the playwright's need. What does she mean? Why is she, why is she asking these questions? You know? And once you start getting to that, then you're going to get to the questions will formulate themselves in such a way that. What about leaving things out? Like open ended? Yeah, sure. All the time. All the time. You don't explain everything. You have a workshop. You know what I'm saying? Without with open ended things. It's hard to get out of the workshop. Like an interfaith workshop. I mean, it's like, even if it's your first or second track, you need to go there just to get it out, like you said. And you just want to, at some point, you want to know when it is too much. Or you'll know, I guess, when it's, when it's too much. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, yeah, you know, when it feels like, 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 no, when it feels like, 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 like part, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I have whole, you know, I like types of theater that are big on storytelling. Yeah, That's the type of theater that I like. That I like so, and, and so I like you know when the messenger comes in and tells you, oh man, I saw him at the crossroads. Man, he was like swinging the club, and it was deep, man. And shit, he killed somebody, he killed somebody else. You know, I like that kind of, I like that kind of theater. It's interesting. The messenger comes in with the need to tell a story, right? So it makes sense. That's Like the messenger comes in with the knees. Oh man, you're the guy who had the thing in the ankle. I took you to the mountainside and I couldn't. Look who you are now. Right? He has a knee. Yeah. I don't know when it's too much. I don't know. I suppose we'll figure it out. So, I'm having trouble writing an actual play. I write like little scenes, because I see little scenes in my head and how the people would move, but I have no idea how they speak or even if I want them to speak. So then I'll write these little scenes or these little images, but then I'll abandon them. So I have all these like little paragraphs that I just leave. And I want to bring them all together, and I don't know if it's to create one whole actual play with dialogue, or if it's just going to be an image piece. And if it's an image piece, how do I even know where to begin with that? Because I don't have experience with that, but I feel like that's the way I'm wanting to go because I don't I'm not really caring about words so I don't know if anyone has experienced this before probably how do you deal with that and where do you where do you go sure I come from a feature editorial background, so I'm a documentary feature editor. Um, and documentaries, when you're cutting it, you know, you start out with like 200 hours of footage. And the way that I start is like, I, I cut these small things that don't really make sense to the bigger picture. And they're small scenes or like interesting characters or like cool images or motifs that just like interest me. And then I just like string it along into like a random order or like a chronological order and like watch it down to like make sense of it. Have you tried just putting it into like an instinctual order and just like reading it together? Not, not yet. I've literally just been abandoned. 
in a pile of, of few. I mean, my instinct would be to like take those things like like every bit that you've kind of abandoned and just like put it in a in any sort of an order and try just like reading it, um, you know, chronologically or not chronologically, and just like step back and take a look at like what that really means. And then, like I think that will like lead you to the next step. At least that I found out. I think that's, that's sort of like the fun part of writing, what you're doing. Oh, it's sort of like the fun part of writing, you know, just letting the ideas fall out onto, the, onto your page. And it's okay to me uh, um, to have things and little pieces like you're doing and pile up and then look at them when you're ready and see, do they fit someplace, do I have something? That's stirring my desire to write. Yeah. And you may not be at that point yet. But I think it's great that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. It'll help you. Keep going, make some notes on post-its or whatever on your pad. 